Well, good morning, guys. If I haven't mentioned it yet, Happy New Year. I hope you guys had a great holiday. I know I did. Now I'm back on the honey-do list slash things I gotta get done. And one is more upper level storage. And uh, I've been kind of thinking about it for a little while and I've kind of uh, come up with a plan. But my plan involves a 25 foot beam. And my mill does a maximum of 16 foot six. And uh, so these standard mills, these Norwood HD 36s, when you, when you buy the kit, they come, I don't think you can do quite six, 16 feet. You can do just under 16 feet. So I, I bought the extra four feet knowing I wanted to be able to do 16 foot lumber, but now I want to do a 25 footer and my mill isn't long enough. Now I could go out and spend some money and get some uh, extra, extra extensions. Cause you can, you can actually make these things as long as you want. I know the, uh, you know, the cathedral that burnt down, they have a, uh, Norwood and they've got, they're milling up 40 foot beams, but they got just kind of like extension after extension after extension. And, uh, they can go as long as they want. Now I don't have the luxury of having that sort of money. <laughs> so instead I'm going to, uh, I'm going to make do with what I have. I'm going to attempt to make a 25 foot beam on my 16 foot six Norwood sawmill. Ricky. Frankie, is it snowing? Is it snowing, Frankie? What do you think? Frankie is out here and uh, she likes to sit in the snow. Frankie, you like to sit in the snow? She likes to eat in the snow. She comes out and she's just like, mmm, snow cone. She's like, bum Hey, Frankie? Yeah, you're like, I don't care, it's snowing. Hey, Frankie? Yeah, you wanna play? So that's what you would do if you wanted to make longer ones. You get another four foot section. As you can see, that's the uh, that's the four foot section there. And then you can just carry on with the length. Just bolt them on and just carry on. So I think the plan is to uh, take the beam, cut it 16 foot and then either pull it or push it a little bit further. Plan in here is to go from side to side. I wanna go from this side all the way to that side with a beam to have upper level storage around here. And it allows me to get a lot of this stuff that you see off of the ground, giving more working space. It is a fair space already, but I need more. Cause uh, you know, you wanna store stuff like, you know, you get good deals on uh, particulate filters with, uh, with the uh, charcoal filters, the P100s. Look at that, five bucks. I got like 23, 23 of them. The regular, they're worth like $50. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna grab, and uh, they expire like in 2027. So I got lots of time. Lots of time to use them, but like that's the sort of stuff that if you got a good deal on them, you pick them up and uh, you save yourself a lot of money. But the problem that everybody has is storage cedar shims that are just kind of in the way, or like you know, walnut chunks that are in the way, or drop sheets, stuff like that, sawmill blades, giant 55 ton hook, you know, chainsaws, like extra sawmill blades. Like that's the sort of stuff that I don't really want on the ground. I want an upper level in, in store, like, you know, off cuts of 3 8 plywood, spare tire, storage. Storage is the key. So it's gonna go up here, easy. Well, we're at the, uh, the beam store. The biggest problem with finding something that long is finding something that is straight. This here is a tree that we actually, uh, we scarred last January uh, to force the sapwood into the heartwood. It's not quite ready yet. As you can see, it's kind of healed up. So what's that, what that does is actually, it's an old, it's an old technique of, of helping preserve the wood by forcing the sapwood into the heart of the tree. That one's not quite ready yet, but I've got other plans. That's kind of like it's, it's weather resistant wood. So I'm going to use that for the sawmill shed uh, at some point. But uh, the one that I'm going to pick is going indoors. So it doesn't really have to have any weather resistance. So I've got to, I've got to pick one. Like, a, like it's 25 feet long, straight. I have a lot that get to about 16 feet and they're straight, but not, uh, they started to look hook at the top, but I'm going to have a look around. So if you guys are just joining and you guys don't know the story of this pine forest, this pine forest was planted in about 1967 and uh, it was, it's a tree farm. So everything was planted in rows and uh, it missed its first, second and third thinning. So uh, now I'm here, you know, 20 or 30 years too late. 
for the thinning. So what I'm doing every winter is I come in here and I actually, I take down a lot of the dead standing and uh, I'm starting to uh, thin out some of the live stuff because you want a lot more light to get to the forest floor in order for this tree, this farm to essentially rehabilitate itself by allowing something to grow on the forest floor. As you guys can see, there's, it's kind of like a desolate, barren wasteland. There's nothing, nothing here for any little animals or forest creatures to uh, eat or hide in. It's just, uh, yeah, it's nothing. And the wind, when it picks up, it just whips through the forest. Yeah, it's a cold place to be. It's uh, it's ongoing. I think I'm year six of this thing. It doesn't look like you know, I have even touched it, but uh, I enjoy doing it. So it gives me something to do. Get out in the winter time and, uh, and get her done. I think I found my tree. This guy here. Now it looks really, really, really tall, but I think I'll just be able to get enough of it to, uh, you can't really tell how big this thing is on camera. The reason why I'm picking this one is because it's got really small branches. A lot of the other trees, they, uh, they tend to have really big branches. That means you'll have really big knots, but this one's got little tiny branches all the way up. So I think it'll, it'll be better suited for my beam. It's got quite the girth, so when I do mill it down, I can get either a live edge or a square timber out of it I'll have lots and if I'm looking at everything around it it'll actually help everything else because they're very crowded here there's like less than six feet between our trees and for trees this size you kind of want more so especially when you take out a tree this size it allows the other trees not to have to compete for nutrients either being water or soil nutrients and uh overall good for the forest. relatively smoothly you can see the live branches start like the top ten feet twelve feet you got the top twelve feet of branches the rest is dead all the branches have fallen off I should uh, show a picture of what a white pine tree looks in the wild I could probably put it up over here somewhere this does not, this looks like a telephone pole. And that's what every tree in this forest looks like is a telephone pole. They're not what a white pine should look like. Anyways, we got our beam. I think it's a, it's a fine specimen. It's gonna be something to try to mill this thing and try to get it back to the mill. But uh, yeah, so this, this pile of uh, sticks here I'm going to leave for the, uh, the forest creatures. It gives them cover and it also gives them food. They like to eat the tops. Bunny rabbits and whatnot like to eat the tops of the tree, so that'll stay there. And uh, yeah, so let's get this thing back to the mill, get her set up, get her start. I'm gonna start milling.
Hey, Frankie. Where were you to help? Were you gonna help? Hey, hey. Were you gonna help? You're like, I show up when the work is done to play. Yes. Here, what's this? What's this? Stick? There you go. Hey. What's this? All right, so we got it on the mill. We got the flare on the root base on the wrong side, so we gotta roll it. But, uh, yeah, she sticks out uh, pretty far. She's long, she's long log. Hey, Frankie? Long log. Hey, big one, big log. I need to roll this, but I can't find my can't. It is living somewhere in the snow, but I got like, it's like four inches or three inches on the butt of the log I need to cut off, but it's on the bottom. I'm gonna use my ax and see if I can get her to turn. If I had a cant, that would have been a lot easier, but as you can see, I've lined up the blade. I've pushed the log over and the, just gotta lower the blade slightly and then I can continue my cut, making a 25 foot long beam on a 16 foot deck. You can see how far it's sticking out the back end. So I'll just push it back. So I wanna square up two sides, front side, back side, the rest is gonna maintain its live edge appearance. Well, that wasn't easy, but I made do with what I had. I have a 25 foot long. Out of curiosity, I looked up how much a eight by eight beam 25 feet long was, and it uh, ranges between 60 to $80 a linear foot. So that guy there is worth between $1,500 and $2,000, which is mind blowing to uh, spend that much money. I guess, you know what, at the end of the day, it was, you know, a whole day worth of work in order to get that thing that size that square and I haven't even squared it off I've only squared off two sides because that's the look I'm going for that's probably an extra premium right there just to make it extra custom I think it's pretty cool but anyways food for thought it's you save a lot of money if you got the time and the will to do it but Kevin you have all the toys well you know what at one point I didn't have all the toys and I made it work anyways I have made beams from an axe. I've hand hewn beams with an axe. I have cut them with hand saws. I've flattened stumps with floor sanders. You know what, if there is a will, there is a way to do it. You could make your very own beam from a tree using a pocket knife. It would take you a long time, but you could do it if you wanted to. And that's really what it comes down to is whether or not you want to do it. You can do anything you put your mind to it. Alright, fast forward to I've got my posts in place on both sides. One over there, one over here. And all I gotta do is lift this 25 foot beam up into place and uh, that should be really easy. I also have some center supports they are leading up here to go in the middle. So let's set you guys up over there and you guys can watch. It's like old times, Chris. We're gonna do some sketchy stuff. You think this is gonna work? I need to just try and see what happens. Let's see what happens. Well, you got a plan. We're gonna lift because we can't lift the whole thing because the tractor's not big enough. So I'll lift half of it, and the tractor will lift the other half. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so I'll lift that side, 
and then see if you can get it over top of your stuff. Yeah, and then we'll secure it on this post and then lift the other side up. With the 10 other people that are helping. Well, it's I've got 50, like 100% more people than I started with, which was just me. So, anyways. So you, so you do it on your own? Well, I, I could, but it would take longer. Well, I, we had some doubts. It was just slowly but surely, really. Like, like that's, a, that's a monster beam. What do you think about it, Chris? Does it satisfy to actually see that thing hovering in midair? No, I didn't put that much work into it. Well, you got, it's the thinking work. It's the, it's the slow, it's the slow, methodical, got to do it, right? We don't have the right tools. It's whether your tractor could lift it or not. Well, yeah, but like, well, it can't. It couldn't. It no, couldn't it, lift it. It couldn't lift it. It couldn't lift it. So, but we got it there. It's all about using the tools you have to make it work. Because a lot of people are like, we're going to get a bigger machine. Well, you know what? It's not a bad idea to get a bigger machine. But if you only have a small machine, you got to use a small machine to get it going. So that's, uh, that's pretty much the hardest part about that. The rest is just kind of stick framing. So yeah, as you can see, there's going to be a lot of area here. And it's basically storage to get it off the floor. To get Chris's stuff that he stores here off the floor. I only have two things here. There's the whole corner is... And then the back shop, yeah, anyways. It's, it's what you do for your brother, right? You think? So Lena, you've been working on something. What you working on? I wanna see. <gasps> to clean your foot. To clean your foot, what do you do? You take your foot. So, so you take your boot and you rub it on there to get all the mud off. Really? That sounds like a great idea. Do you think, have you tried it yet? That looks like it works good. It does. Cool. Maybe you gotta maybe pound the nails in a little further. <gasps> that looks pretty good, buddy. Good job. I'm gonna pound the nails a little. Yeah, yeah. Hammer them in. Remember, don't hit the pink one, right? Like the pink one. Your finger. Don't hit your finger. You know, it's not. <laughs> don't hit the pink one. I know how to do it like this. Cool. All right. Well, once you got them all pounded in, we're gonna we're gonna recheck and we'll try it with our foot. Okay, that's a good idea. Where'd you come up with that? I just came up. With, like I heard some of the other radio said said like there's something that you can like put your foot on and rub your uh, foot on it. Oh, okay. Heard it on the radio. Huh. That's neat. All right, we'll check back with you when you got all the nails done, okay? Okay, they're already probably done. But I'm just trying to nail this one in. Okay. Now that I have my ledger board up, I'm gonna focus on my floor joists. Now, it's a lot easier doing this with two people because one guy can hold one side, one guy can hold the other side. Easy peasy. But I don't have that, so I'm gonna make myself an extra set of hands, which is a, basically an old piece of two by four and uh, a block and a, uh, another block with a lag screw on it. And what I'm going to do is attach this guy like this. I've pre-drilled this, so it should be that hard. I don't want it too tight. What it's gonna allow me to do is that I'm gonna put my floor joist on one side, I can hang on to it, and the other side's going to be like a little arm that I can pivot and throw my joist in here, and then when I'm done, I just pivot it off, and then I can get my little, uh, I wanna call it a cripple, but I'm not sure that's the word, but it's, uh, it's just a, it's a stick that's going to allow me to hold up my floor joist on the one end. So that's what you do. And uh, it's interesting, because you know what? There's ways to build alone, and it's a lot easier with other people, but there's something about building alone and figuring out how to do it by yourself without getting hurt. Uh, I used to hang drywall alone and I would make a, uh, a T-shaped thing and I would uh, wrap it with carpet. Uh, just, and I'd cut it off to the, just below the height of the ceiling and then I would lift one end and then jam the, uh, the T-shaped thing with the carpet on it to hold the board up. Um, you know, back when you couldn't afford a drywall lift now, you know, buy a drywall lift and use it for your job and then sell it. 
on marketplace you get pretty much all your money back and you don't have to worry about the rental fee i find anytime you rent something you tend to want to rush so i try not to rent anything i just like to just go out and buy it and then when you're done the job either a sell it move it pass it along deduct slight you know wear and tear and then just sell it but uh, if you can make your little your jig or your tool to help you it uh it allows you to do stuff by yourself so this guy should work as I've thought it up. Let's see if it works. On a side note, in the summertime, I uh, was looking on Marketplace, which is a dangerous place to be, uh, and uh, there was a lady getting rid of a deck, and uh, actually this deck was had treks on top of it, and it was free to good home. And uh, Don and I went and collected it. It's, uh, it is a series of two by tens, pressure treated, womanized wood, and uh, they're like 14 feet long. So I'm just gonna cut them off to my size. You can see there's still screws and whatnot in them. That's okay. And it's still a little bit of a stain. Somebody stained the bottom of them. But uh, yeah, anyways, this was, uh, this was all kind of free. Free, you just gotta provide the labor to get it out there. Well, got a little bit of a rainy day project going on. I've got uh, Mike here. He's uh, he's my low, are you a low voltage expert? Your low voltage, high voltage? Low, low voltage. Low voltage low and high voltage expert? No, no high. No high voltage, just low voltage. Just okay, low. so 12 volt. He's my 12 volt guy. And uh, what we're trying to do now is we're trying to actually make a 12 volt DC heater out of some parts we bought from Amazon. We've got some uh, Princess Auto stuff here. We've also got a bunch of uh, meters and stuff because I want I want my expert in the field to test them out. There's a K-Wheats multimeter that uh, is a Christmas present. Nice. It might be your Christmas present. I don't know, but... Uh, Looking forward to trying those. They're colored. Anyways, but he's going to try those guys out. And uh, the idea behind this thing is to create a space heater from a 12-volt battery with a solar panel to keep the batteries warm. Yes. So like it's a battery keeping itself warm. It's it's kind of a neat. It's kind of like a self. We're just dump, like, we're dumping the extra power into the heater yes. to maintain the temperature of the battery. Yeah. So it's like it, it should last. It's like a perpetual motion machine. It, it exists. We're making it. Yes. Yeah. So that's our plan. We've got the little. Uh, we got old computer parts that we're wiring. We got the little. It's a CPU fan essentially yep. to the 12 volt heater. And then that goes to the battery, which is in turn going to be connected to a timer, which is going to run a, a heater for the batteries that are going to keep the batteries charged in order, because cold temperatures and batteries do not get along. They do not, correct? especially lead acid. You want to keep yeah. that above zero. So ultimately the plan with these guys is to either A, run the solar aerator on the pond mm -hmm. and to keep water from freezing. So that's our goal is to see, it's kind of like we're bench testing this thing. We're going to try it, see if it works before we do full scale. So that's yes, proof of concept first. All right. Let's see if it works. Let's see if it works. This is the computer gift that keeps on giving. We use the CPU fan from where the heck was it was over here in order to, uh, to power our fan to get rid of our heat. There's lots of parts inside computers that are useful for other things. Like even this heat sink, the aluminum chunk, there's like that dime battery down there that's useful. Even the wires and the switches and stuff. There's lots of things that can be used and repurposed for other things. Say that again? What, what did you say? I don't know what this is going to do. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, we're going to find out. I have confidence in your ability, Mike. Uh, at least somebody does. Somebody has to. That's right. So we've got 12 volt wires wired up in in parallel. Sweet. Yeah, parallel. Pa parallel. So yeah. we got power 12 volt to the fan, 12 volt to the heater, 12 yeah. volt in your hands, 12 volt on the battery. Uh, this is my negative. Yeah. This is my positive. How do you know that? Um, I'm guessing. Okay. All right. Let's fire it up. <laughs> this is the only thing I want to know though. Is it is what does it matter which one is positive or negative on these? Because they're the heater. Yellow. No, it's a resistance heater. I guess it wouldn't matter. Don't let the magic smoke out. Okay. So negative first. Let's get that well, on. I, there. You should, oh, I was gonna say just I just touch it. I'm just gonna. It's working. Cool. Smells like toast. It's pulling a lot of power, let's be honest. 
Well, it is working. Like it's it's blowing. Like feel the hot air coming out of that. These wires need to be bigger. Yeah. Yeah, they need you, you to be think? bigger. They do. It's, yeah. it's getting hot. Are they melting? Okay. <laughs> it is. Okay. Look, you can see it melting right oh, there. It's getting warm. Okay. Yeah. She has. Well, she works. Okay, that was proof of concept. That's awesome. It's she, getting warm. Oh yeah, she's hot. Oh yeah. Like whoa, she's hot. Perfect. Okay, let's let's upgrade the size of the wires. All now. right, let's. Uh, let's do we'll, that. we'll do round two in a minute. Round two. That shouldn't melt. No. Last word. If anything, it'll it'll melt down here, but it depends on what's pulling the the amperage, which is this. And if it comes with factory smaller wires, it should be fine. Yeah, and it's got the. Uh, was that asbestos coating? Yeah, yeah, like extra asbestos. Okay. No, I don't think it's. It's like it's. It's like. It's like um, the same kind of wire you'd see in a st in a stove. It's got that uh, that wrapping. Insulation. Insulation, but there's like a different word for it. It's like mm. fireproof insulation or something. Something like that. Anyway, that should work. So we get the bigger wires. Should be fine. Do you want like bigger, bigger wire? How do we attach that um, to this? I'm gonna have to just maybe just wrap it around there. Yeah, that's a good with. idea. Just for and then. Oh no, trying. I have uh, maybe a couple bolts. We can wrap some bolts around. That's a good idea. Okay. Okay. Test two. Test number two. Okay, you're gonna put the negative on. Yep. Get that going first. So Mike, you got an electronics testing page on YouTube you're gonna be doing. I do, yeah. It's uh, testing with Mike really? on YouTube. What are you gonna be doing? I'm gonna be testing a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna be building stuff, fixing it, doing some circuit repair, um, pretty much whatever. Keeping things out of the landfill and uh, trying, to, trying to clean up the world. One electronic at a time. One electronic at a time. <laughs> yeah. And get a really cool TV in the in the process or something. Something like that. So yeah, that's yeah. actually pretty cool. So what uh, what's the channel name called? It is Testing with Mike. It's kind of unofficial it's, yet. It's unofficial. Uh, if you search up Mike Carnage and look up Testing with Mike on YouTube, you'll find me. Uh, there'll be a link in down in the description below if you want to check out. You can listen to the baritone soothing voices of Mike fixing <laughs> many things. He is, uh, he's great at what he does, and that's why I always ask people that are great at what they do to show me how they do it. So that's what we're doing today is... A little sample. A little sample. We're going to see if we can make some fireworks slash heat. Well, maybe no fireworks, just heat. Just maybe just heat. We just need the heat. All right. No fireworks. But let's... Uh, try it out. Let's try it. Let's try it No right further now. ado. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Sparkity spark spark. Look at that. She's rocking. Any smoke? No, well, she's running faster, it feels like. Yeah, better connection. Better connection. She's hot. Yeah. That's like instant heat, it's amazing. Crank it out the heat already, eh? Do you have a heat gun? Yes, I do. It just, needs, just see the temperature. needs batteries. We should, uh, why don't you screw that thing down? Let it run. I want to put it on the switch first. That's a good idea. Just so we're not okay. stuck. All right. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay, so this is test three. Test three. One of several things might happen here. It'll either work, it'll melt, or it'll spark. Okay. I followed the instructions, uh, and it looks like it's wired up right, but we're gonna find out. All right. Could so be good, could be bad. You're, you're, you're only questioning this timer here. I'm only questioning that timer and the wires that come out of it because we tested with the smaller wires and yep. they melted. Oh. I, I cut down the length a little bit and mm -hmm. then I, uh, I made sure everything was tight. So we're gonna see what happens right now. Yeah. All right. So let's hook up our negative. We'll just do this rough, and then I'm just going to, uh... actually, you know what? Let me clamp that down. That's good. Let's hit the manual on button. Oh. Nothing, no, no magic smoke. It works. Cool. I don't think anything's heating up. I do smell heat. Smell heat. I smell the smell of heat. That's good. So it's either this heating up. Oh yeah. Well, that's hot. All right, we're running the uh, full scale test on the heater. The wires have heated up to a temperature and they've kind of stabilized. They don't appear as though they're gonna melt. Nope. No smoke. No smoke. It's just good. It's just warm. The wires are warm and we might upgrade the wire and with the insulation a little bit, but we're gonna run a full scale test. We're gonna run it for like an hour or something like that. Yep. We're not getting much drain on the battery. What are we getting? Uh, uh, point zero zero one drain per minute. Okay. So it's negligible. And we have about four or five of these batteries we're going to hook up in parallel. So we're going to increase the tank size. Yes. So we'll have more battery to run our heater longer. And while we're doing that, it's, it's about coffee time. 
And anytime I get something neat, I always like to include my friends in the package. And that includes you guys. So if you guys are interested in a battery powered espresso maker, this thing here, it's called the Outin. And it's the a mini battery powered espresso maker. You can make your espresso. Is it espresso or expresso? Es espresso. Espresso. And uh, are you Italian? Huh? He's half Italian. He's fully qualified for this. Espresso. And espresso. So we're going to take this thing. And what you do is you press this button. And in three to four minutes, you have a perfect espresso brewed on site battery powered. It'll do like four or five brews per charge and uh yeah so if you guys want one comment down below out in one word out in and you'll be entered into a random draw and i will send actually the company will send you one of these mini espresso machines so you got to put the words out in as in one word into the comments down below and you'll be entered into a draw for that but uh, meanwhile, I'm going to actually fire this thing up and make my buddy an espresso. All right, your espresso's ready. Give her a whirl. Oh boy. The inaugural espresso. I need this. Isn't that great? Look at that. It's got my oh. Look at the little, the crema. Crema. Is that crema? That's, the, that's crema. the technical term for frothy stuff. Mm. Try to, All right. is it hot? Might be lava. That is really good. Is it good? It is really good. Excellent. Wow, it works. That's, uh, well, do we have yeah. any doubt, right? No, not at all. That's uh, the Outen. So if you guys want your very own Outen, Look at that. Uh, comment Outen in the comments, and uh, we'll, uh, if you win, we'll send one your way. Cheers. Turn it on. So what have you done here? What's this thing here? This is a... That is a solenoid. Okay, so um, you got the solenoid so you don't pass in high voltage through the timer. Yeah, we had a little bit of issue uh, with heating on the wire. So instead of putting the voltage through the timer, which not a great idea anyways, we decided to put it through a solenoid. So I've hooked it up. I've checked my wiring. Uh, I'm going to turn it on and see if it works. All right, let's look. So let's, let's see if it blows up. It shouldn't. All right. Oh, Ooh. the yeah. solenoid kicked in. Yeah. Fans on. The heater is heating. Heating. I can feel it. It works. Ooh, it's hot. All right. All right, proof of concept. Sweet. All right, now all we gotta do is make it look pretty. Yes, we have a plan. All right. All right. We'll check in with it's when it's pretty, and uh, that thing's cool. Well, it's hot. It's you know what I mean. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little bit of a trade secret, and I don't know if it's uh, like a really secret, secret trade secret, but it's uh, it's something that I have used in the past when uh, I didn't have any money. Well, it's not that I have money now, but. You know what, when you want a lot of paint and you don't really want to pay for it, the best thing to do is box your paints together. Now, by boxing paints together, you can take like colors and mix them in a five gallon pail, and that gives you a large quantity of a very similar color. If you're not picky about color, it's the cheapest way to get anything painted. Now, I want to paint my, uh, my loft area because it's got that dark brown 1990s, every deck is painted that color. So I want it nice and bright and white but I don't want to go out and spend a pile of money on white paint. So what I've done is I've gone and I've asked around for some old paint. Now I've got some, uh, you know, pour plafond. Well, that's the French side anyways. Ceiling paint, I got some flat paint. I got some other ceiling paint. I got some semi-gloss. <clears throat> I've got some uh, beauty tone designer pool, mood, I think that's trim paint. Uh, Silk interior, exterior. Uh, I got some uh, Bullseye Zinzer 123, uh, some Bear, some Seco, and uh, some uh, Rona brand, some Glidden. I got every brand of paint here. As long as it's latex, water based paint, you can mix it all together and it's going to give you, I would call it a super paint. It's super paint, super coverage, because you got all the best of all the worlds and uh, you got a lot of it. I'm gonna run this thing through the sprayer, so I need a lot of it. And uh, some of these five gallon pails actually have a little bit of it. Now, if you don't got any friends with extra paint on hand, what you can do is a lot of municipalities have paint reuse programs because they wanna keep this stuff out of the drains, out of the landfills. So they take a donation, they can donate it, and then you can go to the donation center and actually they, they 
pick out the good stuff and I give it away for free if I can get it open. And then you can pick it up that way. Usually they're closed in the winter, but summertime they're <clears throat> open, ready for business. Okay. As I mentioned, it's free. Okay, so what we got, what we got here is a uh, white color. And uh, it appears as though, you just gotta make sure they're not frozen, because uh, that's no good. Um, and also what you gotta do is you have to strain it, because you don't know where the paint was, or it's got chunks, or little snot boogers and stuff like that in it. So what you do is you grab yourself a, uh, um, a pair of nylons, and if, uh, you know, if you're wearing them, you just take them off, I don't judge, and uh, use it to strain your paint. So this one actually has, there's no end on it. Well, I'm not gonna do this one, I'm gonna tie it in a knot. And then I can dump the paint in there, and it's giving me a fine filter, fine filter, it'll, filter all of the chunks out and give you a, like almost brand new paint. So what we're left with is a complete five gallon pail. You probably want to stir a heck of a lot of it just to make sure everything's blended together and there's no snot in it, which is the biggest concern. It's all stuck in that nylon that's down there. So we ended up consolidating two, four, six, seven, and then a little bit of this pail, and we still got this pail. So we could, in theory, have about uh, 10 gallons of uh, free white paint, which you can do with other colors too. Just make sure it's acrylic and uh, send it. All right, we're taking a look at version three. We've upgraded the solenoid because the other one catastrophically failed, it melted. And uh, we've added some safety eventually, which is the 300 amp. Breaker? DC breaker. DC breaker. Look at that. Shut it off so you can kind of clip it off. It'll trip out. And then we still got the timer, which weathered the storm. And we got our little fan box here, which uh, which pulls the hot air or the cold air in here, and it comes up there on this 12 volt heater, and it's all powered by a deep cycle battery. So what do you think of that, Mike? Look at I, I I can't help but notice it's dark outside now. Yes, this took a little bit longer than I hoped for, but uh, it's good. It's it's done. It works, and it's uh, it heats. So cool. It's great. Yeah. Are you gonna Are you gonna show a little bit about this on your channel? I will. Yes, I'm gonna give a uh, a rundown of how this all all works. Cool. And uh, what I had to do to get to this point. But uh, yeah, do you want to see how it works? I, I let's, let's let's do it. So we so you have to time start it if you need it to, or you hit the manual button. Yep. Yeah, so you can set a, a timer, or I'm just gonna hit manual on. Turns on the solenoid, and then turns on the fan, turns on the heater. That's cute. Yeah. Itty -bitty. It works. It's cool. Just like that. Technology. Right. It's very pretty too. I like it. Thanks. So that'll keep, uh, that'll keep a lot warm. That's the idea. We want to uh, be able to keep batteries from getting cold. Now, I know they sell mats that keeps batteries cold, or kept batteries warm, but they don't heat up the space, and that's uh, kind of a byproduct of having this system here as it's heating up the air. Uh, we could always have got the mats, but that, uh, that would be not two birds with one stone. So Mike, if somebody wants to look at more detailed approach to electronics, what, uh, what channel are they going to? They can find me on, uh, or you can find me on Testing with Mike on YouTube. Excellent, and uh, the link will be in the description below if you want to find out more information, or if you, this is your can of worms, you like dealing with little electronic I, I stuff. I love this, I love this stuff. This is, this is my favorite. I love to tinker and build, and uh, this, this was a labor of love. Cool. Function before form on this one, for sure. <laughs> awesome. All right, I wasn't gonna show this, but uh, you know what, it's bonus footage. I've got everything plasticed off. I got my drop sheets up. I've got all the joists and bays cleaned out. Now I'm just gonna give a quick coat of paint to brighten the space up a little bit. Kind of gives a uniform look to it. Uh, I realize it's a shop and it doesn't require it, but uh, it wouldn't be me if I just kind of left it like this, kind of like half, it's got like half brown paint, half uncoatedness. So yeah, I'm just gonna quick paint. You guys can watch it in fast motion with uh, the sprayer. Yeah, if you guys ever get a chance to use a sprayer, use it, it's awesome. That's not bad, look at it. 
She's got a little bit of light paint on me. I had to shut her down a little soon because the uh, it was it was getting a little hazy. I don't want to wreck my camera. I'll let that dry. Put another coat on it. It's looking good so far.